Welcome to today's edition of In The Can, where we're coming from the rooftop terrace of the Majestic Hotel for a chat around television. Dan Ackerman from AOL is asking the questions. All right, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. I guess the, the first question is, do we see the worlds uh, colliding and digital taking a stronger role in the practices and the way that media or video is bought and sold? Or do you think the legacy television approach of targeting and measurement will, will drive the ecosystem? We're seeing kind of the, the powers of digital be applied to television. But I think that the one missing piece that we're starting to see as television heads down the route of being traded programmatically is we're, we're losing, I suppose, the art of television buying. And, and so often now the conversation is, is based on one metric and often that's price and we've got to move away from that and I think that's going to be led from a kind of buying strategy point of view which isn't there right now. Um, I think it's interesting as you talk about sort of the, the art of buying um, I think what I'm seeing is that there is kind of a, a fundamental uh, two clear objectives that are coming out of digital uh, which is the role of recency and delivering the right message to the right consumer at the right time and more precision coming out of that. But then also these big tentpole, how do we leverage context and really important moments that are happening, television still allows us to do that. And how do we make the most out of that moment through a much more integrated relationship with big media owners? We should stop asking that question, whether it's TV or digital. It's just gonna be video. Right? Ultimately, the platform's going to be different. You're going to have different technologies that are going to allow different types of things to be done. But it's all going to be video, and there's going to be a display marketplace, in my mind. And then we're in the, the business of sports, so we have a robust business that is television in the old, and, a, and a digital video. So, but we're agnostically thinking about them as video, and it's more about is it live or is it on demand. Does the currency change, uh, or do we continue to operate there but have other data in the background? The, the, the currency has to change to something that's adopted by everybody, right? Everybody's looking at you, new and unique different ways to measure success and not success. Every single agency group, clients within agency groups are doing it differently. But it makes it very difficult to transact when you don't have one common currency. That's been the beauty of television. The legacy of television has been the idea that you've had one at least side that both sides could uh, agree to. So we have to figure out as an industry how to get to something that, in, that captures the new consumption pattern, but feels a little bit more industry standardish. Clients are looking for uh, visibility of that audience, defining who the right audience is, and then being able to have uh, the appropriate data, regardless of who that who that publisher is, and be able to transact that way. So th I think that is the role of an agency to actually try to help to define the ability to bridge the different publishers with a single data source. There seems to be a big shift towards accountability and attribution. Mm -hmm. uh, so is that something that you've at least unified from a digital and a television perspective? For us, absolutely. We have, you know, we've rolled out what we call the TV stack, which is really helping us to be able to look at video in a unified way with single data sources to be able to understand how do we build unduplicated reach across multiple platforms regardless of if it's mobile, if it's linear, and so on. Um, that's really helping clients be able to feel very confident about being able to move dollars across different platforms. Going back to the currency question, um, now that you're able to measure and demonstrate you know, the, the ROI impact and the value there, uh, does that translate into increased CPMs on the age gender? I'd love to see increased CPMs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I still, I still think that's the biggest, biggest pushback, biggest negotiation we've got. I think we've kind of the, the heritage and evolution of kind of programmatic has come from real-time trading, the long tail, kind of the cheapest cost per thousand to deliver a result. And we're now pouring kind of premium inventory into that, whether that be linear, VOD, kind of catch-up services, yet the conversation keeps getting dragged down to the lowest common denominator being cost per thousand. Our goal is to get there to understand the value of it before the marketplace gets there and understands how they want to transact on it. Because we're going to have to demonstrate that from our side, otherwise there's not going to be a lot for a premium publisher, a lot that we're going to pour into the system. Tempole kind of programming as a, a revenue contributed to MCN, it still sits around about 30% of our revenue. And I think what we'll start to see is, is say, if we've got some brands that are involved in the, the AFL Grand Final or the Rugby World Cup as an example, is how do we use great data sets to find that audience that's been kind of super absorbed in that piece of content and where do they go next? Mm -hmm. And that's where you can then use kind of audience-based targeting, continue that conversation outside of the main temple. So I think that's where you'll start to see the programmatic automated audience delivery versus contextual-based targeting come together. And that'll be really, really powerful for advertisers moving forward. But what do you think the biggest change uh, going into the 17, 18 upfront uh, is going to be? Certainly for the local Australian market, it will be about alignment. 
uh, and that's alignment as a, as a television industry to come together and promote kind of all that's kind of great about television and, and re-energize that, but also alignment of the systems across the board. Without the kind of systems and infrastructure, we can have many great conversations about moving the dial forward, but they won't move fast enough unless we get industry buying at a system level. So it'll be about the alignment across the industry will be key for us next year. I think alignment so that we have a common view about the audiences and how we're delivering that. I think the other big conversation that's going to happen and whether or not it happens in an upfront format or it's going to happen prior to that is getting to quality content. Um, making sure that we've got fit for purpose content that's being delivered in the right context um, and the right platforms. And I think that's the biggest issue that's holding clients back right now is they understand the value of going cross screen. The question is, do they have the right content to be able to engage consumers effectively? Great. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate everyone being here. And uh, to these panelists, give them a round of applause. Thank you.